Hey, it's Ben the Coin Geek, and welcome to a coin theory discussion. Today I wanted to talk about coin grading. And coin grading is always a hot topic when it comes to collecting coins. And the first thing that I want to say about coin grading is that coin grades don't matter. Okay, now for those of you who didn't turn off the video yet, just hear me out. One thing I learned a long time ago is all that matters is a coin's price. And this is an old time collector, dealer, friend of mine who had taught me that. And it's really true at the end of the day, uh, whatever the coin grade is, it's between the collector and the dealer to agree on a price, right? That's the most important thing. And at a coin auction, it's the same thing. You can have coins that have the exact same grade and one will sell for two grand and one will sell for 20 grand because the collectors that are fighting for that coin love it so much that they want, are willing to pay a huge premium for it. So uh, the grade was the same, but it's the price, the price ended up being very, very different. So that's the first thing about coin grading. Now, specific to what you thought the video was about, uh, the coin grading community, uh, the coin collecting community has talked a lot about changing the grading system from its current 70 point scale to maybe something different. Um, I actually like the 70 point scale. I think it's fine. I don't think it needs to go away. I don't think you need artificial intelligence or precision. I think it should be left in the hands of the dealers and the collectors and the people in the hobby. And I think that um, we've gone too far with the grading companies, uh, but we've also gone too far to turn back. Um, we've given PCGS and NGC all the power, but the biggest problem with them having the ability to kind of tell us what grades are, you know, how coins are graded, uh, is that the coin grading, the slabbing, the certification has done to the collector's ability to grade what calculators have, <laughs> calculators have done to the American's ability to do math, right? It's supposed to be a tool that helps us and yet it, it really hinders us. So uh, my second main point for coin grading is that I'd love to see I'd love to see collectors learn to grade better. Uh, spending time on on specifically one coin type, say you only collect Lincoln pennies or you only collect Morgan dollars. This I think is a helpful thing to do. Um, anytime you specialize, you're going to be able to know how to grade, and so that's uh, that's always helpful. Uh, when it comes to when it comes to coin grading is if you specialize in something so uh, the other thing that I was going to say about coin grading uh, when it comes to things that I would actually change I would put a lot more information on the labels um, you know I'm, I'm actually a really big fan of what they do with the ancient coins that's a pretty coin um, but they put a lot of information on there and then they also put the um, strike and condition by itself up here, and then they have a lot of other information on it up there. So I think they should do something similar for US coins. Um, and the biggest thing that I'm advocating uh, is split grading, so that you have a grade for one side of the coin, and then on the back, maybe you have a different label that has a grade for the other, other side of the coin. Um, and I think every collector has seen this. When you look at coins and you say, uh, you know, sure, this coin is a 65, but the one side is, is way nicer, or, or whatever the grade is. One side is way nicer. Um, this gets me back to coin pricing because then, you know, you look at the gray sheet, and all of a sudden, if you have split grades and if you have information about strike or luster, well, how's the gray sheet going to account for that, or the red book, or you know, uh, the NGC or PCGS price guide. Well, to be honest with you, I, I really don't think that those prices guides are all that accurate anyway, currently, with the simple system that we have now. Um, I would really love to see NGC and, and PCGS's price guides to be accurate. I don't understand why they're not accurate. They have all the technology. Um, I don't understand why they're inflated. To me, they look intentionally inflated. And it causes a problem in the hobby um, because when a collector looks at NGC's website and sees a coin list for $140 and a dealer knows he can only get 100 bucks for the coin, so he's offering 80, 
well, all of a sudden, you know, the collector thinks the dealer is ripping them off trying to pay half price for a coin. And uh, it creates a lot of problems in the marketplace when you have inaccurate pricing. So I'd really be in favor of them finding the most accurate pricing they can if we're going to use those price guides. But once again, with what I started with, to take us full circle, what matters the most is the price of a coin. So if you did have a system where you had a lot of extra information, it actually really puts the power back in the hands of the marketplace, in the hands of the collector, because the collector is able to go to a dealer and the dealer and collector are able to get together on a price for a coin because the collector says, I like this coin for X amount of dollars, and the dealer can say, well, you know, I think so, or, or they can haggle a little bit, whatever it is. But what I don't want to see happen is I don't want to see NGC or PCGS or Heritage or the gray sheet really control the marketplace with pricing because that's bad for the marketplace. Anything that's artificially inflated is bad for the marketplace because eventually artificial pricing pops and then everyone gets hosed. <laughs> and, and I love the hobby and I want the hobby to last a long time. And so I think accurate pricing is important. Um, so I threw a lot at you in a very short window. So please leave your comments, your thoughts on, on one of the points, if you will, on, on coin grading, on split grading, on what's the most important thing, pricing or grading. Uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch the video. I'm Ben the Coin Geek. You can follow me here on YouTube and on Instagram. Thanks for watching.